Venus Fridays, let's talk about what's happening with Venus, our divine feminine planet this week, as well as the astrology in general, so that we can um, better tune into the divine feminine energy within ourselves and what's going on so we can co-create as consciously as possible with the energies that the solar system is reflecting to us. Okay, so today, Friday, Mercury and the sun are conjunct, meaning they're right together. People call it Kazemi, right? Where Mercury is in the heart of the sun. This is what Venus did last week. And so Mercury, the planet represents our mind, our mental thinking, our awareness is getting this massive infusion of energy, vitality, life force energy from the sun, right? So this is all happening in Gemini. So you could really feel like your mind is like really getting an infusion of energy right now, which could feel great or could feel intense, like overthinking, overstimulated in your nervous system, right? That's what Mercury represents so much is like our central nervous system, which obviously impacts our peripheral nervous system as well. Um, okay, so that's happening today. Then on Sunday, Venus is going to square Neptune and then move into Cancer. Okay, so I'm actually going to share my screen before we get ahead. Let's start looking at all of this in Stellarium.org software. And here we can see here is Friday, today, right now, right? So you can't see anything because the sun is up and I've got this in the morning. So I'm going to turn the sun off so we can see what's going on behind. And then we can see right here's Mercury, Venus, and the sun. I'm going to slide this over, but let's just take a second and we'll kind of see here's Jupiter, Uranus, Mars, Saturn, right? This is all what's hidden behind the light of the sun. Let's turn the constellations and the constellation art on so we can kind of see where we are, right? So the sun, Mercury, they're all coming out of the horns of the bull constellation here. Jupiter's still in this constellation. Okay, so let's zoom in. I'm going to move this over, zoom in a little bit more. I'll move this kind of down so we can see it. And here we are, Mercury meeting exactly with the sun today. Venus is about to move into Cancer. So let's just move this forward to Sunday. And oh, sorry, I moved that two months forward. I was like, whoa, wait, what just happened? <laughs> that was August. Let's move it two days forward instead. So we'll just go back, right? So here is Mercury with the sun on Friday today. Here is Saturday. See, Mercury's moved on a little bit. And then here is Sunday, right? Mercury's coming into its conjunction with Venus as well. But here they are, Venus moving into Cancer today. So Venus squares Neptune. So comes into a relationship, a special geometric relationship, 90 degrees away from Neptune which brings in this Neptune energy of connecting into the heart, right? That's what Neptune, Neptune can um, represent like dreams and visions and all of that kind of spiritual energy of it being a celestial world planet, an upper world planet from that shamanic view of the three worlds. But Neptune to me so much represents the place where we connect into all of that through our heart, right? So Uranus will represent for me like where we connect into that consciousness and that awareness through the mental realm and the thinking and that kind of universal consciousness. Neptune will represent where we get into that place in the heart. So Venus or divine feminine has this special relationship with Neptune on Sunday, just before she moves into Cancer, which is a sign that is all about learning about unconditional love. So it's almost like Neptune kind of helps set that stage as Venus makes that transition into a new sign that are both like 
heart, 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 unconditional love, Neptune, universal love, and Venus, cancer into learning about our own I don't want to say individual because that's not really right with cancer, but our own like people love, right? So cancer one has to learn about unconditional love for herself and then she can provide that to her clan, right? Her people. Cancer is that mother archetype sign, that healthy mother that nourishes takes care of her people, but she has to be able to do it for herself first. So cancer can like over give and it needs to learn to like, I've got to come from a place of fullness. So I like to think of it as that idea of when we're on the plane, like the mother needs to put her air mask on first before she puts it on her children or the people that she's responsible for. Because if she goes down, everybody's going down, right? So that's the cancer energy. So Venus moving into cancer, you know, this is one of the signs that in our current day and age, we're really comfortable with the feminine being and the mother archetype, the over giver, right? We love the shadow of cancer for women to like, overgive, give to their own detriment, just take care of everyone, focus on that. But so I would say one of the key things for Venus moving into Cancer is it's an amazing time for us to think about how we're giving and nurturing ourselves, how we're putting on our own air mask first. And Cancer so much about learning about unconditional love and applying that to ourselves before we can give that out generously into the world. So also, I just want to point out too, see how all this is happening right on this hand of Orion. Here's Orion, the three stars in the belt. So this is the place where Cancer lives, the start of Cancer in our time. And here's where the June solstice is going to be, which is coming next. So last thing I'll just say, I said all of this is happening on Sunday, the Venus can uh, square Neptune and then moving into Cancer, but that's happening like late Sunday night where I live. So you, this may be happening early Saturday morning for you, like, you know, on the Eastern part of the United States and moving into Europe and beyond, right? So this is a Sunday, Monday kind of a thing that's happening here. So let's progress forward. I'm just looking at my notes I got here and, um, yeah, let's just go straight into the solstice, right? So Venus, Mercury, all this stuff happening, Cancer. And then we move forward to the 20th, June 20th. And now the sun is at the same place, right? So this is considered the galactic cross, which let me see if I could just bring that up really quickly. Sorry, you can't see this. Um screen. And there we go. So here, this orange line I brought in, the galactic equator, is the path of the Milky Way. And so right here is where uh, we look out of the galaxy. We look out of the Milky Way, galactic edge. And that is on this cross, right, of the ecliptic, the path that the sun moves on, and the path of the Milky Way, our galaxy. And here is where the sun moves into Cancer for this June solstice, right, at this point. So at galactic edge on what's considered this galactic cross, that's where Venus was when it moved into Cancer and where Mercury was when it moved into Cancer as well, right? So the sun is doing that. And here we have the June solstice, right? The start of summer and the longest day of sunlight in the Northern Hemisphere, or the start of uh, winter and the shortest day of light in the Southern Hemisphere, right? So June solstice, this is happening right here. It's so exciting. I love this time of year, right? I, my son is in Cancer, so we're moving towards my birthday as well as I have Venus and Mars there. And so I'm rapidly moving, I'm in a Venus return. So it's a lot of um, 
energy for me at this time into my chart specifically. So I love this time of year and summer because I live in the mountains of Colorado and there's a lot of winter here. So summer is very precious <laughs> time. Um, okay. And then the last thing I'll just say, so um, yeah, what do I want to say about this? So just cancer, this is a great time as we move into this cancer season, the sun enters cancer, right? All things, a lot of energy around cancer is really thinking about those ideas of unconditional love around the feminine, watching the places that we're over giving um, and making sure that like our cup is full to give from, right? Especially with the feminine that is just so encouraged to just give, 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 give. So yeah, I'm going to leave that right there. And then the last thing I'll just say is tomorrow, Friday, I mean, sorry, um, next Friday will be our Venus Fridays and we'll talk about it then, but I want to set it up now because it's important to be able to like start looking at this stuff is the full moon and it's the Capricorn full moon, right? So the sun is just moved into cancer on the 20th and then the full moon in Capricorn opposite that on the 21st at the very beginning degrees is the most out of bounds moon that we're going to have, right? People are traveling to Scotland. My, um, co-partner in Venus Alchemy, Kaylin is in Scotland. See the lunar standstill. We're like at the peak of the lunar standstill right now on this full moon. And the reason why I bring this up, I mean, besides all those obvious reasons, is to say this is a great time to notice where the sun and the moon are on your horizon. So if you are an early bird, Notice where they're rising, where the sun rises and then where this full moon rises. And if you're not and you are out in the evening, notice where the sun sets and then you want to get up early the next day. <laughs> notice where that full moon will set, right? If you could see both would be great because you want to notice how the sun is going to be at the furthest north place that it can possibly go at this June solstice time. So notice where that is on your horizon. And the full moon is going to be at the furthest south direction that it can go, but way beyond where the sun can actually go. It's the most extreme, the furthest away from the ecliptic, from the sun's path where it will rise or set. So it's a cool thing if you're tracking and you can see this, you go out and I'm always like, whoa, look how far out of bounds the moon is. So if that's all like too much information, just start noticing where the sun rises or sets on your horizon line. And the solstice is the perfect time to do it because it's at the furthest extreme of where it can move across the horizon. And then in the coming months and days, years, you'll be able to understand more about that whole out of bounds moon. But it's this real time out of reality. We'll talk about that more next Friday. And then the last thing, I've had some requests to bring the aromatherapy back and I forgot to do that last week. So I remembered to do it this week. And I wanna talk about a couple of essential oils that I really love for cancer. So one is pinion pine, which just has this like pine, right? That kind of foresty smell, but pinion has this real sweetness to it, right? It's what pine nuts come from. So it's a nurturing tree. It provides sustenance, um, nourishment for us. When you sit with pinion, which is the, the pinion juniper is the largest forest in Colorado. It covers the most ground. So there's a lot of pinion pine where I live and we actually have one in my yard. And when you sit, when I sit with the pinion pine, it really just feels like it's, it's that mother cancer kind of archetype. And when I've taken students out to sit with the trees, they'll feel that energy as well. It always comes up, but it's like, it kind of like it energetically just wraps you around in that 
unconditional love, mothering, nurturing kind of energy. So pinion pine is an amazing one to use while we're going through this cancer season, or if you've like cancer prominent on your chart or cancer rising, right? It's something that you could use all the time. And then also I'll say blue chamomile, right? Which has this incredible blue color. Oh, that was just a little teeny drop, but you can see this amazing blue color, kind of blue green, that blue chamomile comes from white flowers, but it makes this blue essence. So all the blue essences are really um, anti-inflammatory. They like calm inflammation and agitation down. And so I love blue chamomile for cancer as well. Also Pisces because it's really calming and nourishing to the nervous system. We're moving out of Gemini season, which is really stimulating to the nervous system into cancer, moving more towards the heart, right? These things can feel good or challenging depending upon your own individual chart, but blue chamomile is another one that can help just calm, soothe, and bring us into our hearts and into more of that vibration of love. So thanks for the requests around the aromatherapy and bringing that back. And I hope that answers your questions. And I will see you next Friday for our amazing Out of Bounds full moon.